Good place. Drop anchor, Jason. Looks just like the same boring place we died yesterday. You're such a pain, Jason. If you're going to give us attitude, don't bother coming along. Hey, I wish something exciting would happen, that's all. If you want adventure, you have to look for it. Let's go! Exciting, Jason. First a shark, and now pirate treasure. Yeah, sure. It's probably full of stupid old junk. Can you get it open, Darren? <laughs> Got it. Wow. Look at this. This is too cool. Maybe it's a pirate journal. Big whoop. Papers. <laughs> this is awesome. It's over 130 years old. Listen to this. The events of which I write had their beginning, for me, in March of 1870, when I was a girl of 17. My father was the captain of the Scotia, a passenger ship crossing the Atlantic on the way to New York. We're right on schedule, Papa, as usual. Ah, Bernadette, it's a shame you're a girl. You would have made such a fine sea captain. Really, Papa, just because I'm a... <laughs> Oh, we've struck something! The hull's breached! We're sinking! Calm the passengers while I go below. Please stay calm! Help us! What's happened? Stay calm! We are quite safe. Attention! A hole has been punched in the hull. We have sealed off that compartment and stopped the flooding. It will slow us down, but nothing more. <sighs> Papa, do you think it's the work of the sea monster? Those stories are nonsense. This was a freak accident, nothing more. Papa refused to believe the reports of a huge sea monster seen by other ships, but I was not so sure. And in conclusion, I say that the great depths of the ocean are unknown to us. Until the day arrives that we can safely explore those depths, 
The ocean will continue to keep her mysteries. Thank you. <laughs> You're fascinated by the drawing of the narwhal, I see. I was wondering, how big are these creatures? The sea unicorn, as they are also known, is generally about 60 feet in length. Oh, is that all? You're interested in sea life? I was hoping to solve a mystery. Please let me be of service. I am Dr. Pierre Aronnax, author of Mysteries of the Ocean Deep. Oh, you are Dr. Aronnax? I am. I hope you're not in a hurry. I must wait for my assistant, Conceal, to return. He's gone to the docks again. His niece, Bernadette, was meant to arrive days ago. He insists I meet her, so I suppose I must. It will make Conceal happy, but after that, if you're free for lunch... Bernadette! Hello, Uncle Conceal! Huh? I see you've met Dr. Aronnax. Berna, you're... I'm most frightfully sorry. <laughs> Shall we have lunch? But where is your ship? Why did you arrive so late? Is your father all right? Oh, yes. Papa is fine. The ship's been put in dry dock to repair a hole. We had an encounter with the famous sea monster. What? Genuine evidence of the creature? I must see it at once. A clean cut right through the metal plating. Amazing! I thought perhaps if a narwhal had a strong enough horn, it might solve the mystery. It could be a giant narwhal, one much larger than previously seen. May I quote you on that, sir? I'm covering the story for the Herald. A giant narwhal, you say? Well, I was only theorizing. Scientist identifies sea monster. My career is over. I'm ruined. This will make me a laughing stock. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. The article quotes a Dr. Perry Earwax. If the doctor says there are such things, then there are such things. Telegram for Dr. Aaron Axe. Thank you, sir. It's from the Secretary of the Navy. I'm invited to join an expedition to hunt the sea monster. A Navy ship, the Abraham Lincoln, leaves first thing in the morning. Conceal, my books, my bags, we must pack at once. You've been my assistant for many years, but this could be a dangerous journey. You don't have to go. Where you go, I go. So should I. I have as good a reason to hunt the sea monster as anyone. Impossible! Take a woman to sea on a Navy ship? It cannot be done. I'm sorry, Bernadette. I wish we had more time together. I will think of you every day. Yeah. Don't forget to write. Goodbye, my dear. We'll visit you again once we return. I'm Captain Farragut. Welcome aboard! in there. But, but, but you cannot be here. Well, here I am. Conceal. Conceal. Ah! Oh. We're passing Sandy Hook in the lighthouse. Come see. Yes, Doctor. In a moment. Is everything all right? Fine. Yes, fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're nothing to worry about. I'll be right there. 
<sighs> you can't hide me forever, Uncle. But your father! I left Papa a letter. He knows I will be safe with you. What will I do? The doctor will never forgive me. I heard voices. Bernadette! Bernard, sir. I'm Bernadette's twin brother. Guess she didn't mention me. Conceal, what is the meaning of this? Uh, you see... Please, don't blame my uncle, sir. I stowed away on my own. He is your responsibility, Conceal. I'll have to explain it to Captain Farragut. Thank you, sir. I won't be a bit of trouble. I am doomed. Doomed! The trip took many weeks. We steamed down the coast of South America, heading for Cape Horn at the southernmost tip. Pierre became fast friends with Ned Land, the ship's harpooner. <laughs> Come now, Professor. You don't seriously think a narwhal can get bigger than a whale? There are many stories of giant squid and giant crabs. Faw! Nonsense and fairy tales. And what would you know? You're just a harpooner. <gasps> You're a bit of a shrimp, aren't you? Put me down right now, you big galoot! You squeak like a mouse, boy! Put him down, I beg you! If Bernard wants to run away to sea, he must learn to take the rough play that comes with it. Oh! You need to build some muscle if you ever want to heft one of these. Oh! Ha 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 Next, we journeyed northward into the Pacific, where the sea monster had most recently been seen off the coast of Japan. Day after day passed. We began to lose hope. <sighs> Ahoy! The thing itself to leeward on the weather beam. It could be a whale. With glowing eyes? Mr. Land, are you sure? Sure as can be, sir. Engineer, fire up! Full steam ahead! Blast! It will be dark soon and the thing easily outruns us. Look, it, it's changing course. We're at full speed and the thing is swimming circles around us. It's playing with us, but I'll make it listen to the tune of my harpoon. <laughs> the monster is armored! Fire the cannon! It's too close! We can't bring our guns to bear! Where is it gone? Bernadette, you lied to me. Uh, I had to. You would have left me behind. So you wouldn't end up in a mess like this. You stupid girl. Don't call me stupid. You're in the water, too, in, in case you hadn't noticed. The 
the ship! It's leaving us behind! The rudder is damaged. It means they can't steer to come back for us. But they can send a lifeboat. Can't they? We can only wait and hope. Pierre, I can't swim any longer. Don't give up. Help! Help! hit, Ned and I fell overboard, and then found this floating island. <gasps> you are no Bernard. I'm Bernadette. Guess I'll never throw a harpoon like you. <gasps> this has to go. No, not my hair. This isn't a floating island. It's a metal <gasps> vessel of some kind. Made by men. They could be pirates. We can't let them know you're a woman. It had to be done. It's so light. I love it. I will never understand women. It's submerging. We're doomed. Doomed. Ahoy! Ahoy inside! Let us in! Listen to us, please! No good. We're locked in. At least we're alive. If we don't die of hunger first, I'm hungry enough to eat a herd of cattle right down to their horns. Only you could think of food now. Dry clothes. Yes, dry clothes. Well, turn around and close your eyes. And no peeking. This is made of byssus. It's the natural thread that fan muscles use to adhere themselves to rocks. It's soft as silk. Fascinating. You should save your energy. It's been hours. When is the blasted master of this ship going to show himself? I am the master of this ship. I am Captain Nemo. Nemo? But that is Latin for no one. It is all you need to know of me. I have cut myself off from the rest of humanity. This ship, the Nautilus, is my only home. Now, who are you? I'm Dr. Pierre Aranax. This is my assistant, Conceal, and my, uh, servant, Bernard. Ned Land was the harpooner on our ship. I know of your work, Dr. Aranax. You love the sea as I do. I regret we must meet as enemies. But we are not your enemies. Was I not pursued and fired upon with cannon? Did you not strike my ship with your harpoon, Mr. Land? That I did. And a good throw it was. But we thought you were a sea monster. Do you deny your captain would have pursued me with less vigor had he known this was a submarine vessel unlike any the world has ever seen? I... No, that is true. He would consider you an even greater threat. I debated with myself before coming to see you. I want no part of other people, except for my crew. They are completely devoted to me. Then if the good captain will let us go, all will be well. That I will never do. I give you this simple choice. Go back into the sea I plucked you from, or remain on the Nautilus from this day forward. That is the choice between life and death. It is cruel. I answer to no man. Make your choice. We choose life, of course. Ned Land is not a man to be kept prisoner. I'll never give my word not to escape. I do not ask for it. 
There is no escape. Therefore, you may go where you like inside the Nautilus. If it pleases you, I have had a lunch prepared. Food! That's more like it. Out of my way! What does the N on your banner stand for? Nemo or Nautilus? Both. The Nautilus is like my flesh and blood. Please eat. I hope the food will suit you. I guess he likes it. It is good, Captain. What is it? Filet of turtle and seaweed. Huh? Everything I use, wear, or eat comes from the sea. I have sworn to have nothing to do with the land ever again. Did you build this marvelous ship yourself? Yes. I am trained as an engineer. I built it entirely in secret. But, sir, why do you hate the world above? On the surface, men oppress the poor and helpless. They steal and enslave and make war and commit all manner of crimes. What would you know about slavery? Thirty feet below the surface, oppression disappears. There is no master. Here I am free. Finished eating. I will show you the rest of the Nautilus. Nemo took us to the rear of the Nautilus, where engines were powered by electricity, generated directly from the sea. Everything on the Nautilus was electric. Lights, heat, air compressors, even a kitchen where he made fresh water out of seawater. The ship was controlled from a central pilot's room. Then, he took us back through the dining room and into the front half of the Nautilus. The library contained thousands of books of science and literature. We came to a salon filled with priceless specimens from every corner of the ocean. This is our location? Yes. I take daily fixes of our position. You will be able to follow our journeys as closely as you like. These tell our depth and speed? as well as temperature, pressure, and many other useful readings. You have seen the inside of your new home. Now, see the world that awaits you. I must now take my leave. Dr. Aronax, you and your servant may have the cabin off this room, next to my own. Did he say, you and your servant? Entree. Don't worry, there's a little bed here for a servant. Nemo may think I'm a servant, but if you think for one minute... No, no, no. Think of me as your servant. I'll sleep here. Ow! Ow! isn't it? Oh, yes. Very. We must find a way to escape! Yes, I know we must, but not too soon. A chance like this will never come again. In the meantime, we must be careful to keep Bernadette's secret. We cannot guess how Captain Nemo would feel about having a woman on his ship. Let's see. The latest reading from Nemo was latitude 32 degrees 40 minutes, and longitude 167 degrees, 50 minutes. That puts us here. I'm impressed. You're very good at reading charts. What is that little speck there? It says Crespo Island. That is our destination. Doctor, I invite you and your friends to visit the forests of Crespo Island. Come with me. So he does go on dry land from time to time. What are these? The forests we will visit are underwater. I have devised these suits to allow humans to walk upon the ocean floor. You can't be serious. They are reinforced against the pressures of the ocean depths. The tank is filled with compressed air that is fed into the helmet. Ned, how can you resist the chance to walk underwater? Do what you like, Doc. But I'm not putting on one of these crazy contraptions. 
And neither should you. And miss out on this? Not a chance. These tubes use compressed air to fire a spear that delivers a powerful electric shock to whatever it strikes. Use them only in great need. When this fellow was on top of me, I thought I would be his dinner. But now he is my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to count how many men Nemo has, but I can't be sure. How many would you guess, Doc? There are at least a dozen, possibly more. Ned, you can't be thinking of taking over the ship. Why not? Do you have another plan? Please, Ned, try to be patient. I'm not a patient man. It's all right for the doc. He's a man of science. Books and study are like meat and bread to him. But I don't like being caged. I'm a free man now, and I plan on staying that way. What about you, Conceal? I go where the doc... I mean, Dr. Aronax goes. And you? Can this life suit you? I don't know. It's fascinating and wonderful, but... Oh, I don't know. Leave me alone. Bernard, is it? What troubles you? <gasps> Captain, there is something I want to ask you. I was on a passenger ship in the Atlantic not long ago. It was a steamship with paddle wheels, and something punched a hole in it. I thought it was a sea monster, but... Was it you? Yes, it was purely an accident. I made sure the damage was not too great before I left. Then you were trying to sink us. I have no quarrel with your country or her ships. I do not harm the innocent. I save my anger for those who have earned it. I believed Nemo, but a week later I saw a different side of him. 
Look, a ship. Get below at once. He was enraged when he saw that ship. I wish I knew what his intentions are. We are just below the surface, but traveling very fast. Now we are diving very quickly. Have we been attacked? The ship we saw, it's been destroyed. Nemo can't say this was an accident. He is a genius, and genius is easily misunderstood. Genius or not, He's bent on revenge, and we are at his mercy. The Nautilus moved on rapidly into the wild regions known as Papua New Guinea. Fish! Weeks of nothing but endless fish! I want steak, dripping with gravy, and spuds and biscuits. Come. I will give you something else to eat. One warning before you go. Stay close to shore. There are hostile natives nearby. Go up through this hatch. You will enter an enclosed dinghy. Close the hatch tightly behind you. Then release the bolts which hold the dinghy to the Nautilus. we can. Mm, it smells heavenly. <sighs> yes, heavenly. This is the land of cannibals. But I'm so hungry for meat, I might join them. Ned, will I wake up one morning and find myself half eaten? Ha! You're too tough and stringy, Conceal. No, I'll satisfy myself with this. Run for the boat! Run! to our rescue. The Nautilus traveled into the Indian Ocean and into the Bay of Bengal off the coast of India. From India, we went to the island of Sri Lanka. It's the book I wrote. My very own book. There is no aspect of the ocean I have not studied. No sea I have not explored. Well, I'd like to know how you could afford all this. Hundreds of treasure ships have sunk during the centuries. None are beyond my reach. And there are other treasures to be had. Shall I show you one that is beyond price? 
If it pleases you, yes. Then we must once again walk on the bottom of the sea. And this time, I'm coming along. would cost me more than the dollar I spent on a pearl necklace for my girlfriend. <laughs> you claim to have cut yourself off from humanity, Captain Nemo. Yet you showed great kindness to the native diver. He is the victim of a tyrannical government. That poor wretch is like a brother in suffering to me. And I owe you thanks, Ned Land, for saving my life. Ah, think nothing of it. We journeyed across the Arabian Sea and, much to our surprise, began to travel the length of the Red Sea. By now, Captain Farragut would have returned and reported that we four had been lost at sea. My poor father would think I had drowned. It hurt me terribly that I had no way to tell him I was alive. But why would he take us into the Red Sea? There's no way out except to turn around and go back the way we came. We're going wherever the Captain's whims take us. Do you realize, Doc, we've been imprisoned on this vessel for three months? Has it been that long? Surely you cannot be bored. I don't regret what we've seen. But just how long can we let this go on? Perhaps... Perhaps Ned is right. We have to think of the future. We must wait for the right circumstances. Not good enough! We should confront Nemo and demand to be set free. Calm yourself, Ned. Nemo is not a man you can threaten lightly. Let Pierre talk to him. Of all of us, we know Nemo respects Pierre the most. Will you at least ask? Please? Tell him we promise never to reveal his existence to anyone. Fine. I will see what I can do.
I hope I do not intrude. You've come just in time. We're about to enter the Mediterranean. But it's impossible to cross the Isthmus of Suez from here, unless the Nautilus can sail over dry land. Not over, Doctor. Under. Under? I studied the flow of life between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean for years. It led me to find this. This natural tunnel will take us there. You've navigated this tunnel before? Never. Brace yourself. Even with the propeller at full reverse speed, the current will be too strong to stop the ship once we enter it. Rocking around. Captain Nemo has just taken us through a tunnel. We are, believe it or not, in the Mediterranean. <gasps> Good. It's one of the busiest seas around. More chances for escape. What did Nemo say about us? I'm sorry, Ned, but it wasn't the right time to ask. It'll never be the right time for you, Doc. You must give us a promise. When I say it's time to go, we go. I won't leave without you. You have my promise. But Nemo gave us no chance to escape in the Mediterranean. He stayed far from the coasts and deep below the surface. We passed through the Straits of Gibraltar and entered the Atlantic Ocean, which I had crossed so many times with my father. We may never have a better chance. We're close to the shores of Europe. We go tonight at midnight. We'll meet at the ladder that leads to the dinghy. We'll use that boat for our escape. Pierre? I gave my word. I'll be there. We saw no sign of Captain Nemo. Did he suspect? We couldn't tell. up and set it upon the seafloor. We must warn Ned and conceal. Captain, we, uh, we were... We felt the bump and wondered what was happening. I have changed direction and left Europe behind. We are nearly 500 miles from the coast. Why do you tell us this? Because I have something to show you. Something beyond your wildest dreams. Come with me. There was nothing else we could do. We had to follow him. Any hope of escape was gone, but I was driven on by curiosity. What could Nemo want to show us here? Where can they be? They must be with Captain Nemo. But as for escape, my friend, it is currently impossible. We are 900 feet under the ocean. Blast it! civilization. I could hardly believe it was real. He scratched 
something upon the ruins in chalk. I stared at the word with utter amazement. Atlantis, the land that had sunk beneath the waves ages ago. And the disaster that had sunk Atlantis wasn't through with it yet. Nautilus traveled at a rapid pace through the Atlantic, continuing due south. Day by day, the ice grew thicker. The Nautilus picked its way through a dangerous sea of icebergs. Where is this madman taking us now? He's going <coughs> from fire to ice. <coughs> I think he's heading for the South Pole. I don't like the sound of that cough. It's nothing. A little sore throat. I don't like the sound of that either. Let's see what's happening. What does Nemo think he's doing? He can't go this way. He will stop when he is forced to. I wouldn't be so sure, Uncle. There is a theory, Ned, that there is land at the South Pole, an entirely unknown continent. He's going to die! Quickly, get below! The Nautilus had filled its air tanks before the dive, but there was no break in the ice cap as Nemo took us on and on to the south. The compass was worthless, and our air was growing low. Captain, when are you going to give up this fool's chase? When I have set foot where no man has before, on the soil of the South Pole. This up? We'll be trapped! See where we are. There it lies, as I promised, the South Pole. Look at them. They're bold and as free as anything. They have never seen humans, so they have no fear of us. Captain, I think I'll go back for my harpoon. This will be a grand place to hunt. You will do no such thing. The ship is well stocked. We have no need of their meat. But we could have seal steaks. Maybe they taste like cows. I cannot condone these murderous pastimes. If all men do as you, soon such innocent creatures as these 
will be extinct. Forget it. Ned? Best to let him go. He will be in a foul mood for hours. But I may be able to provide him with a penguin omelet to soothe his temper. I cannot imagine Captain Nemo would object to us gathering up a few eggs, would he? Move over! You don't need to take up the whole rock! Lichen. They could be the species Mela. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dr. Earwax. Did I interrupt your lecture? The lecture is over. <laughs> Excuse me. Intrusion. Huh? Busy claiming the South Pole. <coughs> that doesn't sound good. We must get you back to the warmth of the Nautilus at once. All right, you win. to get Bernadette out of the cold. Where's Nemo? There, atop that hill. <laughs> the arrogance of the man to claim an entire continent to himself. He has given himself the power over the ocean. Who can oppose him? The sea is stronger than any man. For three days, we sailed beneath a cap of ice, hundreds of feet thick, as we turned back to the north. We watched anxiously for our new direction. Would we return to the vast spaces of the Pacific Ocean? Instead, Nemo returned the way we came, through the Atlantic and at last to the region of the Bahamas. <coughs> Every time I coughed, Pierre or Ned or my uncle hovered over me. I couldn't let them know how sick I really felt. Come a long way on this crazy voyage. I wonder how far. I've been keeping track. So far, we've traveled 17,000 leagues under the sea, about 51,000 miles. If he gets closer to these islands, let's try our luck. Let me have a look. Doctor, is the head of a squid crowned with tentacles which are covered with suckers? What? Oh, yes, Conceal, that's right. With a mouth like a parrot's beak? Yes, Conceal. And weighing about 25 tons? Yes, Conceal. What? <laughs> it's...
It's a creature out of legend. A giant squid. It actually exists. You mean they exist? Now what? We've stopped moving. Let's go! Move it! Come on! As you have seen, we are afflicted by these monsters. One of them has jammed the propeller. And you mean to fight them off hand to hand? We must, if we wish to move again. I'm in. You can count on me in a fight. Now! I owe you one. No, now we are even. We have won, but I have lost a good man. Oh. She's burning with fever. Give her to me. Bernadette, can you hear me? We should ask the captain if he has medicines on the Nautilus. Nemo! It's his fault we're here in the first place! No, this is my fault. You were right, Ned. We should have escaped sooner. Now she's sick because I kept her here. for the worse. Get some rest. We'll keep watch. Dr. Aronax. Your servant is very ill. Very. This elixir is my own discovery. It's made from sea plants I found in the depths of Atlantis. It's a powerful medicine. 
The last I have. Take it. Thank you, Captain. I'm here. Oh, here? She made it! Ha <laughs> ha! She made it! I want to go home. We will, my love, I promise. I've been selfish, but as soon as you regain your strength, we'll turn all our attention to escape. We'll do whatever it takes. I recovered rapidly, but I found that during the time I was sick, Nemo had skirted the east coast of the United States. If not for my illness, we might have escaped then. Our hearts fell for a time as he headed east, but then he entered the familiar European seas. I feel like a tossed salad. Wouldn't you know it? We're close to the shores of Europe, and now there's an Atlantic gale blowing. We could never escape in this. Why does he stay on the surface? All he has to do is go down to where it's quiet in the depths. What is the madman doing up there? He's defying the elements, just as he defies everything else on the surface. Nemo lingered in the waters of the North Sea, close to Europe. We all dreamt of escaping to these safe shores. We're still far from land, but I say we make a try for it. A ship! Can you make out its flag? There's no wind. I can't make out their colors, but it's a foreign warship. It's miles off yet, but heading our way. I don't care what country it belongs to, I'll swim to it if I must. Over here! Firing at us! They're getting closer! But they must have telescopes to see that we are people. That may be why. Of course! When we were thrown off Captain Farragut's ship, he must have taken back the news of what he saw. Then, they're hunting us. Not us, the Nautilus. And we have no way to warn them. You will not warn them. I know which cursed nation this ship comes from. They are the enemies of freedom. But on the sea, I am the law. I am justice. And I will give them the justice they deserve. Now get below! So much, and why? I 
I see the accusation in your eyes. You think I am a monster to behave this way. But they are the monsters. This was my family. It was the cursed country whose ship I destroyed that took them from me. What I loved most, wife, children, parents, all perished before my eyes. Even my own country they took from me. They pillaged and enslaved my people. Now, I am no one. I am Nemo. All the navies of the world will be on the warpath after this attack. But they attacked him. Who is left to know that? We must get off this ship before Nemo takes us with him to a watery grave. You look worried about our present course. More than worried, Uncle. Where is Ned? He snuck up to the platform for a look. I see land. No matter what country it is, we must make our break tonight. Pierre gathered together his notes of our journey. We had gone 20,000 leagues, about 60,000 miles. I was restless, eager to leave, and suddenly very sad about it. My Nadja loved pearls. Your... <clears throat> your wife? My daughter. She was full of spirit, like you. You remind me of her, as she might have been. Uh, uh, me? But I... What is your true name, my dear? Hey, I'm a big, tough boy. I'm... Bernadette. How long have you known? From the first moment you spoke in the dining room. The whole time? I am not so easily fooled. It pleased your friends to keep your secret, so I kept it also. Here you will be safe, protected. Captain, you've been good to me. You saved my life. But I beg you to give up your need for revenge. It won't bring back your family. There is nothing left for me. Nothing. Leave me in peace. <gasps> what? what? Nemo! He's still in the salon! The music will cover our footsteps. Let's go. Enough! Enough! Oh. Oh. Stopping us now! What's happening? Ow! He's let the ship wander. We're caught in the Lofoten Maelstrom.
It's going under! was the last we saw of Captain Nemo and his amazing ship, the Nautilus. A fishing ship rescued us the next day. My father brought his own ship all the way to Norway to bring us home. I introduced my father to Pierre, my fiancé. As captain of a ship, my father could perform marriages, and that is how Pierre and I were married. It was the most perfect wedding I could have asked for. <laughs> Ned gave up harpooning <laughs> and dedicated himself to caring for the seals in the zoo. Uncle Conceal became the curator of the museum. We thought that was the end of the tormented Captain Nemo. Until one day... Package for Dr. and Mrs. Aranax. Hmm. Who could have sent this? Open it! It was the only message we ever received from our mysterious friend. We hoped he had found peace. One day, when I had grown old and Pierre and Conceal were gone, I knew what I must do. It came from the sea. And it belongs to the sea. I give it back along with this amazing story, every word of which is true. It's signed, Bernadette Aranax. Ah, <sighs> what a beautiful story. Then that means, wow! Look inside the box. <gasps> oh my gosh! Nemo's Pearl, we'll be rich. You don't believe all that stuff. I'll bet it's fake. Don't be a doofus. Obviously it's real. We'll donate it to a museum, and Bernadette's story will live on forever. <laughs> <laughs>